Hey folks, uh, this is the second lesson of confidence intervals for the mean and this is important part right here for if the standard deviation is known, the population standard deviation is known and so don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. There's my good looking wife right there. Uh, and if you go to MrMathBlog.com, sorry about that, I was uh, corresponding with her. And uh, and we this is an elementary statistics class and so this lesson is going to be placed right there okay so the part two is going to go right underneath there as soon as i get done with this okay all right so um uh here we go so recall the margin of error is calculated by this formula where we find our z score for the populations and we listed that in the last lesson i'll re-show you that uh, times the sta the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n, the square root of your sample size. So a C confidence interval for a population mean is is whatever this value is right here. We take we know that our our population mean is somewhere between the sample mean minus this uh, uh, margin of error or uh, and and the sample mean plus this margin of error okay so uh, what if it says 90 percent confidence interval then it's 90 uh, percent of the time the population mean will be in there so the probability that the confidence interval contains um, the population mean that's what this is is our C is it going to be our C confidence and it's usually 90 percent or 95 percent or sometimes 99%. Those are the most common ones right there. Assuming that the estimation process is repeated a large number of times. Okay. All right. So uh, steps for constructing a confidence, confidence interval for a population. Again, this is when the, uh, the standard deviation is known. Okay. So here we go. So verify in words that you see that the standard deviation is known. You write that down. Since we know the standard deviation, then okay and then either state that the population is normally distributed so if you see the world word normal you need to write that down or if you don't see the word normal and the and the sample sizes are greater than or equal to 30 you got to state any and all of that okay so then we find the sample uh, statistics which is the uh, the sample mean which is x bar okay so we add up all the numbers divided by n or plug them in your, into your graphing calculators and calculate that. And then find the critical uh, z-score values that correspond to the given level of confidence. So if it's a 90% confidence interval, we use the z-score 1.645. And if you're wondering where we're getting these, look in part one of the lesson. I showed you in part one how we got these. Okay, and 95% gave us 1.96. 99% gives us 2.575. Okay. So that's what goes uh, next to those parentheses right there. That's that number that goes right there. So then we find the margin of error. We put one of these numbers in right here. We put the given standard deviation here and the square root of n and then pick up your calculator. Okay, and find out what e is. And so then your confidence interval becomes uh, the sample mean minus e uh, is less than or equal to the population mean is less than did I say less than or equal to is less than is less than or e is less than uh, the sample mean plus the the margin of error which is e okay so we're going to use the data in the last uh, lesson on the hours worked in the grocery store to construct a 95 percent confidence interval for the mean number of hours worked by the grocery store employees okay so we're going to uh, construct a confidence interval that gives us a our uh, that surrounds our population mean right there okay all right and it did say it was already normally distributed there and we found uh, the mean to be 29.6 so that was all in the first part part one so the z, z score with a 95 percent confidence is 1.96 so let's find the margin of error so we're going to plug in 1.96 right here. They told us, I think it was 7.9 was the standard deviation, and then the square root of 40 right there, okay? Yeah, they told us that. So, so you get about 2.4, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do um, uh, the 95% confidence interval is going to be the mean minus 2.4 less than the population mean, uh, less than the uh, sample mean, which is this, plus 2.4, okay? So our 90% confidence interval becomes that right there, okay? So how do we interpret that? Well, we're 95% confident that we can say that the population mean number of hours worked is be somewhere between 27.2 and 32.0 hours, okay? 
So how about uh, let's use a, our graphing calculator to construct a 99% confidence interval for the mean number of hours worked by the grocery store employees. Okay, so we got to plug these numbers back in. So enter those into list one. My students already have that entered in from yesterday's lesson. So, so put this in list one. So you hit, um, I'm looking at my calculator here, you hit stat and then you hit edit and then it'll bring up list one. If you have stuff in there, you have to clear it out. Okay, and so you hit um, uh, second function memory, which is above the plus sign, and clear all lists, and then enter, enter, and you've got to enter twice on that, and that'll clear all the lists. And then go back and hit stat, edit, and put all those 40 numbers in, okay? And then after that, then you go back to choose stat again, and then at the top, scroll over to test. So I'm picking up my calculator right now, I'm hitting stat. And test is the, it, it, it's on edit right now. I scroll past calculate and hit test. Okay, and then we want to choose number seven, which is a Z interval. The reason why it's a Z interval is because we know the standard deviation, the population standard deviation. If we didn't know the population standard deviation, that is the next lesson, okay? So we want to do Z interval and make sure to, uh, to select the, st the stats to put in the options when we use the, the descriptive um, statistics. So, and then enter the appropriate data, okay? So... Uh, in my screen, you see something like this, okay? So here's my Z interval and my, my uh, sample mean right there. I think there's supposed to be a little bar on there. Let me do that real quick. There's supposed to be a little bar right there. Okay, so there's my sample mean, and then this is my sample standard deviation, and then this is uh, N right here, or N equals 40 right there. Okay, let me scroll that up right there. Let me let's put my little bar there. Okay, that's my sample standard deviation right there. Okay, and uh, uh, let's see. So a 99% confidence interval is right here. Okay, so it's 26.4 to 32.8. Okay, and so how do we interpret that? Well, we say with 99% confidence, we can say that the population mean number of hours is somewhere between 26.4 and 32.8 hours. Notice it's larger because we're getting a bigger confidence interval. So we gotta have you know a larger interval. All right, so here we go. A college admissions director wishes to estimate the man's, uh, the man age of students, uh, the man age of students currently enrolled. Okay, uh, let's see, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'll get to it in just a second. So in a random sample of 20 students, Oh, the mean age, that's what it is. The mean age, sorry, that should be mean. M E, golly. Okay, let me get that. Let's scroll that over. Okay, so the mean age of, um, uh, from the past studies, the standard deviation is, is known to be uh, 1.5, so we need to state that. So we, know, we need to know that uh, that's our standard deviation. Here's the mean age right here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and construct a 90% confidence interval. So go ahead and um, be, uh, pick up your calculator right there. And because uh, the standard deviation is known and the sample is random, because it did say random right here in a random sample, so we don't care that that's only 20 because it said it was random. Okay, and the population is normally distributed, so it did say it was normally distributed right there, so we don't need to worry about this being larger than or equal to 30. For a 90% confidence interval, our z-score is 1.645. Okay, so so let's go ahead and calculate that. So um, uh, we're going to put 1.645 right there. We're going to put the 1.5 right there. And the square root of 20 goes right there. You guys with me? Okay, so that goes in there. and We get about 0 0.06. Okay, so then we can say our, our confidence interval is going to be uh, the sample mean plus or minus the, the margin of error. Okay, so if we do... Uh, the sample mean, which is um, uh, 22.9, and we add 0 0.6 to that, that's going to get us, uh, or subtract 0 0.6, we get 22.3, and we add 0 0.6, we get 23.5 right there. Okay, so we got to interpret that right there. So with a 90% confidence, we can say that the mean age of all students is between um, 22.3 and 23.5 years. Okay, so interpreting confidence intervals the correct way. Now that I'm positive, if you're taking the AP test, they're going to have these as um, uh, 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 part of the test right here. Okay, because uh, uh, the population mean is a fixed value, 
and it's already fixed. It doesn't change. It doesn't move around, you guys. It's a whatever it is, even if we don't know it, it's a fixed value that's predetermined by the population. It's either in the interval or not. So it's not correct to say there's a 90% probability that the actual mean will be in that interval um, because um, it suggests that the value of the mean can vary, which is not true. It's a fixed value right there. So the correct way is to interpret the confidence interval is to say with a 90% a 90% confidence the mean is in the interval of whatever that interval is right there okay so the um, uh, this just means that uh, uh, when a large number of samples is collected and a confidence interval is created for each sample approximately 90% of those intervals are going to contain the mean okay so here these horizontal line segments right here uh, represent 90% of the confidence intervals there's 10 of them and then 90% of them uh, contain the, the the mean right there. Can you see that this one is not containing it? This interval doesn't contain the mean right here. All the other intervals, the 90% intervals, contains this mean. Here's the population mean right here. That's what this is right here. Nine of these 10 confidence intervals contain the mean. This one doesn't. So. So that's what that's talking about right there. Okay, sample sizes, okay? So for the uh, same sample statistics, as the level of confidence increases, the confidence interval widens. As the confidence interval widens, the precision of the estimate decreases. So one way to improve the precision of estimate without decreasing the level of confidence is to increase the sample size. So we use our margin of error formula to solve for n to get the minimum size needed for our confidence interval. So let's solve this for n right here. So what I'm going to first do is, um, uh, what did I do here? I uh, I just threw this z on top right here. Okay, so the z sub c goes on top, and then um, and then I multiply both sides by the square root of n, and then I'm going to divide by e, and then I square both sides. Okay, so when you square both sides, this is going to how we ca calculate our sample sizes. Okay, to have a certain amount of confidence. Okay, so if it's a 90% confidence, we put that in there. All right, let's try that real quick, you guys. So given a C confidence level and a margin of error E, the minimum sample size of N needed to estimate that population is what we just calculated right there, that formula. Okay, so when the standard deviation is unknown, we can estimate uh, by using the sample standard deviation provided uh, that we have the preliminary sample sizes that's at least 30. All right, so recall this. That was the sample standard deviation right there. Well, don't worry, you guys. We get that in our graphing calculators now. It's no problem. So, um, but we can still do it that way. But whatever this is, oh, whatever de if it comes out of decimal and it always does, always round up. Uh, to the nearest whole number on that, okay? So using our hours worked at the grocery store, how many employees must be included in the sample to be 95% confident that the sample mean is within 1.5 hours of the population mean? Okay, so 95% are, are uh, Z-score, that says S-score, this should say our Z-score, it should be um, um, uh, 1.96, okay? And they told us that the standard deviation was 7.9, so we're just going to plug all of that into the formula right there. Okay, so here we go. Plug it in, and we get about 1 point, or 106.56, 106.56. So we always round that up. Okay, so we need to have at least 107 grocery store employees in the sample to keep uh, our confidence at the level. So, so our interpretation, the researcher already had 40 employees, so the researcher needs 67 more. Note that 107 is the minimum number of employees to include in the sample. They can include more if they wanted to to make it even more accurate. All right, if you are in my class, that will be your homework. Take care.